Here's an interesting Intellivision Amico topic today. This will get your mind thinking, but before I start that, DT Darius, what I was saying was start a brand new channel where you never show yourself. I kind of agree with A. Volp's comment where he said that this has been year a year of preparation, maybe even months of preparation of them flagging and finding out a way to easily now flag. And I think they've impersonated you. That's why I was saying start a brand. And, and you, you said your old channels, in your old channel, your videos in a black room were getting flagged because you already showed yourself on that channel and you already were getting flagged. So it was easy. I'm saying start a brand new channel, new name, new avatar, uh, black screen, just your voice, no swearing, funny rants, start like that. And if it still gets flagged, then I have no idea. But if it doesn't, at least now you know what may have been the reason. That's all I'm going to say about that. Okay, so today's topic, <clears throat> the Intellivision Amico. The Amico. Ever notice why it's been called the Amico, the friend? Amico is Italian for friend. Why? Why was it done that? I have some theories. This is going to be theorizing, theory crafting. So before I start that, look, on the back of your American dollar bill, right? On the back of your American dollar bill is the Great Seal. On the Great Seal, you have the pyramid on the left and you have the eagle on the right. Pyramid on the left, it says in Latin, novus something something. That means new world order in Latin, says on the back of your dollar bill. And then you have, um, then when you make the Star of David, it, sp it spells out Mason. Uh, at the top of the pyramid is the Eye of Horus. The all-seeing eye. On the right side is the eagle. He's holding 13 arrows, I think. And there's 13 stripes and there's 13 stars. That is intentional. Intentional subliminal messaging, right? It's done on purpose to try to tell you something. To try to tell you people that have an open creative mind that there's something behind. You, you guys notice that $1 bill has never been changed, ever. All your other bills... I think most of your other bills have been changed. Even the hundred has been recently changed in America. But that $1 bill has never been changed because that great seal is in the back trying to subliminally tell you what's really going on in this world. Now, I know a lot of you younger people, you already know this, right? This is easy stuff. Anyone who's been on the internet knows this. You older people are the one that probably don't know this. So that's intentional, Okay. On, on on one of the corners of your uh, American dollar bill at the top in the back, there's a little small owl. Why is there an owl? Owl is known as the friggin' uh, the, the the intelligent one, the one who knows everything. Owls are no are put in our libraries. But what what does it mean? So there's so much intentional subliminal messaging on the back of your dollar bill. So now, in television, Amico, right? Calico chameleon, right? Let's start with the chameleon. Why was it called the chameleon? Because it was trying to mask something. It was trying to put up, put a facade. So what happened with the chameleon? On the outside, it was a shell. People were like, ooh, it's this, it's this, it's this. And then when the inside was revealed of the Coleco chameleon, you found out that it was like an, it was a Super Nintendo uh, chip in it, like an emulation chip. That's all it was. So that's literally chameleon. If you look, if you see a chameleon, it just fakes what it is on the outside and, on, and it, it reveals, it doesn't reveal what the, what the inside is. But we, we found out that it was just a Super Nintendo chip. That's the Coleco chameleon. Now, whether that was intentional or unintentional, we don't know, right? Whether it was just had it that the, the laws of life came together and then karma, whatever, and then he just called it the chameleon and it was revealed that, hey, it was kind of like a chameleon. It tricked us. We don't know. Now, that brings me to my next thing. The, the Intellivision Amico. I always, when, when I think about these things, I always bring subliminal and messaging into everything. Because that's, I've noticed in my life, there's a lot of subliminal messaging in everything. The Intellivision Amico. The friend. What was Tommy Tallarico, a.k.a. Scamaroni's, what was his main goal? What was Scamaroni's main goal, his main strategy into selling this Intellivision Amico when he came onto YouTube? It was clearly to make a friend with all these YouTubers. His whole strategy was to be as personal 
and as a friend-like character to all these starry-eyed YouTuber cucks like DJ Cuck, Mike Molest, Retro Advisory Board, Geeks with Rash, uh, Turbo Slow, that's a big one, or Trash JT, that's a huge one, Brett Weiss, uh, Saggy Melons, aka Begging for Millions, just cons- uh, uh, making all these other, I'm sure I forgot, OEB Pete, that's a huge one. It's all about making a friend with these guys, being personal. And that was his strategy right from the beginning was to be a friend and as personal as possible and as buddy buddy as possible. That is why that is why with uh, with Pong show when he went to those events and he actually started asking maybe some critical questions. Tommy kind of stepped back from Pong show a little bit and didn't really engage in friendship that much with him, right? Because he knew that this is not the type of guy that's just going to be my friend and cuck to everything like DJ Cuck is. So that's why his host, I have a feeling that it was called Amico on purpose to subliminally let everybody know that this is the friend and I, Scamaroni, is going to be your friend if you just continue along with this, shill for this product, no matter how garbage it is and how much shovelware crap, you have friggin' 10 levels of skiing and you have Cyrus, oh, there's another one, Cyrus Martin, another friend uh, at one of the events saying that his mind turned to Swiss cheese playing 10 levels of skiing. Either his mind turned to Swiss cheese playing 10 levels of skiing, which is ridiculous, or that car crashers game where the cars are, are going in a figure eight motion. And I just feel like, what Cyrus Martin meant was the cars going in a figure eight over and over is turning his mind into Swiss cheese. That's what I think, kind of think what he meant. But either way, whether it's 10 levels of skiing or that, it's ridiculous shovelware. Now, was it done on purpose? Where he on purposely called it the Amico? to subliminally tell you that it's the friend and his whole strategy. Like, doesn't that make sense to you guys? Like, I know I'm theory crafting, but doesn't it make sense that he called it the Amico, the friend, and all um, all Scamroni did was try to be as best friends as possible with all these YouTubers? Is Wasn't that exactly his strategy? And the Kaliko Chameleon, doesn't it make sense? Where it's called the Chameleon to mask what it really is. But when you look on the inside of the shell and it was found out, it was just a Super Nintendo emulation chip and that it was nothing special. Doesn't that make sense to you guys when you actually think about it that way? Was it done on purpose or would the, was, the, was the fate, you know, was the karma and the, and, and the, and the fate of God just had it called the, Camille, uh, the, the Amico? And that's exactly what Scam already did. That's one of the most power. There has been, there has never been another console release or another product release of any kind. Scamaroni was the first of his kind to do this strategy on YouTube. There was never been, I have never seen, maybe in a different industry, but in the video game industry, I have never seen the strategy where the CEO went around to different, these low end YouTubers, like that pathetic Retrobo, who even dressed up as a Care Bear just to a please Scamaroni gave up his whole basement, had everyone come over his basement. You had that epic Cyrus, uh, Cyrus Martin rant in that basement. He had all these things going on. I have never seen in the video game industry, a CEO going around being buddy, buddy with all these YouTubers. Like that was his strategy from the beginning. And you know what? It worked. It actually worked because they got 17 million raised in investment. What happened to that 16,900,000? Because we know that 100,000 scam road is being sued and he doesn't care. So stop pretending like he's been punished. He is not. I keep hearing, seeing in the comments, oh, he's going to go to jail. He's going to go to punish. Nothing's going to happen to him. Nothing is going to happen to Scamaroni. That guy has sailed off into the Cayman Islands. He is done. He's on the pirate ship. Alvarado's guiding him in a safe place. Nothing's going to happen to Scamaroni because when he was doing all this investment stuff and all this 
crap. He was dotting his I's and crossing his T's. He was making sure that he legally stayed in check and that nothing was going on. You know what? The thing is, all this invest, like the investment money that's been lost, right from the beginning, it's buyer beware. It's on the buyer. It's on the investor himself. They know that. They know that it's their risk investing in this. But Scammeroni, that greasy leprechaun, did such a good job masking it and such good acting. He did such good acting to make it look like that this Intellivision was going to succeed. In the comments, one of you said that I don't think, I think he is a narcissistic. I think he really, no, I think... I think he was on per. He might be a little bit of a narcissistic, but what I'm saying is he turned that dial up so much on YouTube and on these podcasts to the point he had to be that narcissistic way. That was his strategy. That's why cucks like Cyrus Martin, Retro Bro, and DJ Cuck and OEB Pete and, and Trash JT, that's why they were so confident and the and this scamroni winning that's why in some of their videos when they were going against the anti amico side the pro side was saying scamroni never loses he has won in everything he has done he has so much accomplishments that's why scamroni was acting like such a narcissistic is for that because it actually put confidence in these youtuber investors to thinking that a piece of foot bath with a chinese cell phone chip in it that plays literally shovelware games and flash games was going to somehow succeed in today's video game market it was done his strategy of being that you know overly confident on atari age constantly saying i'm the best on podcasting i have this many records and this many this constantly repeating the same things in every podcast boasting about how great he is it was done on purpose because that actually works it doesn't work on us on, on, on the people listening to this, it doesn't work on us saying, hey, uh, yeah, if someone's going to uh, uh, brag like that, we're not going to just automatically agree with you and be like, yeah, this is going to sell. It, but it does work on some personalities, weak personalities, people that just want people that are greedy to get to make a quick dollar. It works on those people. And they're like, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll invest and we'll get make money. That's all it was. It was a 10x return, angel investors to make as much. That's why most of the people on Republic invested in the damn thing because they saw that neil patel video and in that neil patel video all he's saying is get in early this is the the ceo never loses get in early and invest right now and you're going to make so much money that's why you have people in republic old boomers that have no idea about anything about video games they don't even know what a flash game is and they're investing in the damn thing why because they saw the neil patel video it was just a strategy done by these people and it friggin' worked, okay? That's all I gotta say. It worked. It wouldn't work on us. It wouldn't work on anyone that knows anything about video games. But it worked on those people. And it worked on greedy pieces of crap like Trash JT. That's what I'm saying. It was a strategy done on purpose. And he called it the Intellivision Amico. He literally called it what he was doing to all the YouTubers, was being a friend with everybody. And there has never been anyone in the past that's done this exact same strategy of trying to be a greasy leprechaun friend with leprechaun hands. And he was constantly manipulating him, manipulating people with his hand movements and all his gestures. And his thing was, yeah, I'm a tally and I talk with my hands. Yeah, I get it. But like he was just going way too far and just way like just using his charisma and it worked. Trash JT even said in one of his videos that if Scamaroni was an RPG character and he had a he had a bunch of stats, uh, like you know he had strength stat, dexterity, stamina, magic, and charisma. Charisma would be at ten out of ten. His, his Scamaroni's charisma was ten out of ten, and that's what he used to constantly trick people and a good and a good way to prove that is if right now phil adam is the ceo he's just there to basically make sure that and television doesn't fall into any legal problems and and right now phil adam is a ceo i want to ask all you cucked youtubers out there that believed in the television i want to ask you guys if phil adam was the ceo back then and scamroni was never in the picture would you have been that interested in the amico the answer is no 
because Phil Adam is just a you know cook basic CEO. He puts on a suit and he's just like, yeah, yeah, you know, we're just working. Scamaroni was the charismatic, interesting, personable. I'm coming over to your basement. Let's all hang out at Harry's Pizza. Let's all do this together. Let's all, I'm making jokes. I'm Italian. I'm cool. Be my friend. Scamaroni was the perfect person to do what he wanted to do, was just to be all personal with people, call the damn thing the Amico, and actually trick all these cucked YouTubers into shilling for this crappy project. So this the biggest loser of them all, Snestastic, that British speaking prick in England right now. He has he had basically stopped talking about the Amico. He vanished from existence. That guy's now I don't know what the hell he's doing. But that piece of garbage, Snestastic, aka the Amico kid, that arrogant piece of trash used to sit up there in front of his fireplace, constantly saying how the Amico is the best thing ever, and 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 all this crap. And stuff like that, it worked because he is a weak-minded, weak personality piece of garbage, and it worked on him because trash, because uh, not trash JT, a scamroni preys on these weak-minded, greedy individuals, and it worked. It actually worked when he finds out that there's another man or another girl that actually asks critical questions, that's actually not just in it for the greed, not in it for the YouTube clicks. All these people on YouTube, they just wanted to grow their channel, grow the clicks, do this, and make the investor money. They weren't going to, you think really they were going to play a foot bath and put it in the center of their friggin' living room as a centerpiece? Are, are you crazy? That thing looks ridiculous. It looks like a foot bath. It, it's a piece of trash hardware with plastic Chinese parts all in it. There was, no, there was nothing. It was just to make a quick dollar and he preyed upon that to be your best friend. And that's why he called it the Intellivision Miko. That's what I think. Peace.